What is up, YouTube? This is Descendant of Light. Back at you here with another news report here. And about this one, I only have a few words. All I can say is prepare, embrace, for impact. Pray for the best. Prepare for the worst. Let us repent of our sins. And let us ask the Lord to cover us with his precious blood. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to go ahead and let you guys get to the video here. Well, I hope you're having a good September 11th, 2018. Um, always an ominous number in American history if you're from the United States. So by now, many of you have probably realized that the Solar Observatory in New Mexico was shut down and FBI agents called in. And I have a feeling that it might have something to do with what we caught on the SDO satellite today. So what we all know already is that we've been seeing, well, what many of us already know that we've been seeing on the SDO footage, a orb go come down and then another one come up. Well, what I did that really is disturbing, quite frankly, is I compared the size of the two orbs. Orb A is the larger one, and Orb B is the smaller one. We had two different orbs that went by the sun, you guys. That's why they closed the SDL observatory, or the uh, solar observatory down, because we're going to start seeing this more and more. We just had two different things eclipse the sun. Um, here we go. Where I'm going to start you today, though, um, let me tell you something. I have, I've been down the last couple of days because I've been taking care of a loved one, my wife, who has been going through um, a major surgery, just got her back from the hospital. So I've been out for a couple of days. But I've been getting report after report after report from Blue Kool-Aid, oh yeah, and he stays in very close touch with me. But we've been having a lot of unusual activity since the 9th, especially, 9th, 10th, and today the 11th. And where I want to start this whole discussion is with check out what Blue Kool-Aid caught, and then I'm going to elaborate on what he said here in just a second. This, as I go through, see how the pressure goes really, really low? Like it's, it's getting ready to build. He's looking at the magnetopause um, information from the NASA um, satellite system, where they take and compile information from various satellites to show us the position of the magnetopause. And watch this. <laughs> and then it starts building and building, and boom, look at that. Now watch. You guys see that? What's it doing? I don't know that we've ever seen this, guys. And I would have to agree. What it appears the Earth was doing on the 9th, and we're going to get into some other stories that connect to this that talk about the shutdown of the New Mexico Sun Observatory. But the Earth is acting like a capacitor at the very least, where it's building up energy and then it's pushing it out. But it is buffering us right now. We are literally being, on, there's an onslaught from both sides of the planet of energy, and the Earth is just pushing it back. And this is something I did not account for in my long research around the planet X, Nibiru. What would happen when these things got close to us, or closer to us, and what I'm talking about are celestial bodies and or planets and or spaceships that have been approaching our solar system for quite some time. And it looks like the Earth's, this, what it does is it actually pushes it back. So it's acting like either a capacitor, or check this out, it's acting like its own sun. It's actually pushing out what I'm calling Earth magnetic ejections. And here's an example from okay. Blue Coolidge. It's, it's shooting out in all directions from the Earth. Unbelievable. We're not just going in one direction here. So that's interesting, right? So it looks like something is happening where the Earth is actually pushing back a lot of this electromagnetic data, uh, um, uh, electromagnetic energy. And I'm just wondering, I'm wondering if they didn't account for this, if the, if the long-range planners didn't account for the Earth actually acting as its own independent thing, doing its own thing, in spite of all the things going on around us. But of course, the news of the day was the closure of the National Observatory shrouded in secrecy in New Mexico. And in Sunspot New, Me Sunspot, New Mexico, the National Observatory was closed. And this was a story that was on Secure Team and a couple other places. And all of my subscribers definitely, you know, all of my close contacts, I should say, in my subscriber community all wanted me to look at this and talk about this. Well, guys, there's some stuff that's going on with the sun right now that may have precluded this particular shutdown. 
And let me start my story by telling you that I got a piece of footage the other day. And what it basically was, was one of our SDO from 9-7. And I'll stretch this out a little bit so I can play with this image here. And, you know, it's just the normal image. And all of a sudden we got an eclipse. Okay. And that's an eclipse. And usually that's the moon when that happens. Because SDO um, is flying below the earth, depending on your perspective, and sometimes the moon gets in the way. And I get that, and I've seen it many, many, many times. However, what happens the next day? Let me show you this, and this is, I have this live from the NASA site right now. Check out what's going on on SDO. And all three, or all, both of these, um, both 193 angstroms and 171 angstroms both saw the an anomaly. Watch it now, really close. See, it goes that way, and then it comes back the other way. Let's just look at it on one here. It goes down and up. So that, that, that should not happen. And I have a suspicion that the reason that the, the Sunspot Observatory was shut down, uh, hopefully only temporarily, was to hide this from the scientific community because, but the, the question would have to be, why are they leaving it up on NASA's site? If it's so obvious what's going on, all right? It still could be just a very normal, you know, thing. But I don't think so because I've never seen this, the moon eclipse the sun and then come back the other way. I just wonder if these two things are linked. This and then this recent phenomenon. We'll have to keep an, a sight on uh, or an eye on the SDO satellite system over the next couple of days um, as we go. But like I said, ton of information pouring in from all over the place. So I'm not going to bore you with all the, all the crazy stuff that I look at every day. Um, but I wanted to highlight a couple of different things. Um, one of the things I wanted to highlight though, was this is normally one of those stories from before it's news that most people would just kind of skip over, but it's, it's really a transcript of a interview with Nikola Tesla at the end of his life. And he was lamenting in this. He said, yes, there's some of my, he was lamenting that he wasn't able to accomplish the greatest thing that he wanted to accomplish. In the case, in this case, it was the greatest thing he could. And what was it? He said, and here's, I quote Tesla, according to this interview, I wanted to illuminate the whole earth. There's enough electricity to become a second sun. Light would appear around the equator as a ring around Saturn. Mankind is not ready for great and good. In Colorado Springs, I soak the earth by electricity. Also, we can water the other energies, such as positive mental energy. And he just goes on and on. But he wanted to illuminate the whole earth. This is a guy that was being interviewed back in the 40s, 30s. And his most the bulk of his thinking work was done at the early part of the century. And he was saying that there was enough electricity to make a second sun. So if Nikola Tesla says that there's a second sun, then I think the possibility of us having a second sun is pretty high. And let me show you what I mean by that by, il by illustrating with this ISS footage from a sunrise yesterday. You see the monochromatic colors? You see how bright that the sun is, that it just lights up the whole internal camera housing? Tell me that we don't have some artificial light going on out in the atmosphere, guys. I'm sorry. I just, I don't buy it anymore. I'm not going to buy the shillery or the trollery anymore. We're, we have artificial light out there. And, and why are they using the artificial light? Because, guys, I think the sun is dimming. I also think that they need to have permanent shields up in the atmosphere in order for us not to be able to see what's up there. So if you're asking yourself, why can't you see any of the stuff that WSO talks about? Well, first of all, you got to be like an eagle eye. Number two, you have to really know what you're looking for. Number three, realize that they're hiding it most of the time from us. Look at those two huge shields. I don't think those are planets. I think those are shields. I think they're meant to hide key things during key parts of the day. Just look at that weird lens flare, you know? And we're just seeing more of the same. But Kenny G got the little Easter egg object again, and um, we've been seeing that with regularity, and there's a couple people out there that are really yakking it up and seeing it too, so we're not the only ones. But if you haven't been watching the, um, the electromagnetic,